Listen guys, I was super excited for this neighborhood. We were begging for information, they were slow to get it to us and it started trickling in. And then they told us how you could go about buying a home in here. And that's kind of where things went south for us. And I'm here to warn you about that. Welcome back everybody. As always, I'm Bill Olson, your favorite YouTubing Charleston realtor. And today, like I said, we're talking about a neighborhood that I was excited about, but not so excited right now. Now, it's not all bad. I just have some warnings and precautions for you if you're interested in this neighborhood or anything else by this builder as to how they're going about things. I just want you to be informed. So if you do decide to go forward in this neighborhood or any of theirs, you know what to expect. Now, I'm still excited about this neighborhood. I'm not gonna lie, it was in my coming soon video for my most excited neighborhoods that were coming soon this year. So it, that excitement is still there just right now. I have a few concerns that I wanna tell you about. Now before we get started, drop down in the comments if you ever visited a neighborhood that you were excited about and it just left a bad taste in your mouth or you know what went wrong that made you decide to move elsewhere. Let us know, we'd love to hear it. The neighborhood and builder we're talking about today is Sea Island Preserve by Pulte Homes on Johns Island. Now, before we get into my concerns and warnings for you, let's talk about why I'm still excited about this neighborhood. So let's pull up the map here. And you know, one of the things that's gonna be amazing is this neighborhood is going to be over 700 acres, but they're only developing about half of it. So the neighborhood's gonna be split into these different pockets here. And you know, this green is gonna be walking trails through the woods. There's about two miles of those walking trails. The red is sidewalk. Sorry, phase three here and part of phase one, apparently you're not getting sidewalks. Um, but that's okay, some of the floor plans are going to have a golf cart garage, so you're gonna be easily accessible you know, with the amenities center right here. Now the lots in here, originally they told us that they were going to be estate size lots. Now I'm hearing oversized. Uh, we're gonna get into that and my thoughts on that a little later. Now the amenities in this neighborhood are going to be top notch. There's gonna be a resort style pool, splash and play area for the kids, a deck overlooking a water feature, a playground, two pickleball courts to challenge your neighbors, and an open air pavilion that you can use for birthday parties, family gatherings, or whatever. It's going to be awesome. And to top it all off, the HOA actually includes high speed internet and 175 TV channels. And icing on the cake, it's gated. So what is there not to be excited about this neighborhood? Well, that's why we're doing this video. So here's where things kind of took a turn. I had a client super excited. We scheduled a pricing appointment. They did the pricing appointment and then they were releasing their first phase of lots. And they're like, here's how you can buy it. We have something called an easy offer process. You go online, you put in the bid for your lot and then we pick one. Okay, well that sounds pretty easy. But here's, here's my concerns for you and what you need to be aware of. Now, they're not gonna disclose what the lots sell for as they're being sold. So you're going into this blind, not knowing what people are offering. And in addition, they're not even going to tell the sales agent that you're working with what, that, what the other offers are. So let's bring up this here. So this is where they have the easy offer process booklet. I'm gonna link to this down below in the description so that you can read through it and, and be aware. But here's a couple things I want to let you know. Is, you know Who will see my offer? It says, please do not copy your sales consultant on your offer submission email. So there's only, I guess, one person who's gonna look at all of these and you're only gonna know if you won or you lost. So the sales agents don't even know what all the people they're working with are bidding unless they tell them. And they're telling you not to tell them. So there's absolutely no transparency there. And in addition, they're not even gonna tell you how many or if there's any other offers. So you could be competing straight against yourself on this and just in your own mind, just bidding and I'd be like, I need to bid this much to get this property where 
it's down here because you're the only person bidding. You could bid face value on it and ideally get that lot. For me as a realtor, where this really affects me is I am here to inform my clients and help them get the property that they want. Now, if I don't have any of this information, then I'm just as blind as they are trying to help them figure out what and if these other offers are. So what I did, I reached out to a bunch of friends who are realtors in the area and asked them, hey, if you have any of your clients that are bidding on the lots in Sea Island, are you okay sharing what they bid and if they won or lost? Now, I had a couple reach back out to me so we could all kind of come together and figure this out for our clients. And it got a little bit confusing even more because now not only are they asking for a bid on the lot, but they want the house you're going to build there as well. So now we're thinking, okay, if you bid less on the lot, but you want a larger home, which is going to net more for the builder, is that going to look more favorable as bidding more on a lot and building a smaller home? So what I found was someone did get an offer accepted. They bid $11,500 over the initial lot cost and the initial lot cost was right around 15,000. So not quite double and they got it. Now we also had someone whose clients put in two different offers at 6,000 over on a 14 and a $23,000 lot and they didn't get it. So now we're thinking, you know, now we're back to that. Okay, well maybe they wanted a smaller house. Well, what if they didn't have an agent? Because that's going to give the builder a lot more profit margin if they don't have to pay us, the buyer's agent, to help you. So we kind of figured that out. I had a friend who, a friend of hers, unrepresented, put a bid on a lot. So that means the builder is gonna make 3% extra on that property. She bid over double on her lot and she did not win. So to me, it doesn't make sense to go in without an agent because it's not giving you the upper hand. If she's bidding over double the lot and didn't get it and someone with an agent only had to bid 11 and a half thousand over the price of the lot and they did get it. On the flip side, I do see where Pulte is coming from this. I just think the easy offer name is a little misleading. It's similar to buying resale only in resale the agent is going to probably let you know if there's actually another offer on the table, or at least they should let you know if there's another offer on the table so that you're not bidding against yourself or a phantom bidder. And, you know, I feel that with this, Pulte is really taking advantage of the vulnerable buyers in this tight market and just letting them bid these prices up so that they can make more money. Now I said I would get back into the lot sizes. So let's talk about that real quick because that's kind of changed on us as one of the To me, when I hear a state size lot, my mind initially goes to it's going to be at least an acre or more. Well here, of the lots that were released, that $62,000 lot was 0.6 acres. So unless as they go back, we're gonna see larger lots, I prefer the term oversized lots, they are much bigger than just about any neighborhood you're gonna find on Johns Island right now, especially a new neighborhood. Um, and these lots that they released are ranging from a third to two thirds of an acre. Also good to note is there are two different building styles in the neighborhood. Both are gonna be under the name Pulte, whereas in other neighborhoods, they've put them under Pulte and Centex, where Centex is gonna be a vinyl sided project, kind of more of a plain Jane house, and the Pulte line is going to be Hardy Plank, and it's going to be more grandiose looking homes. I kind of want to show you that just real quick as we get back into this. So this is that whole neighborhood. Again, this area is phase one, and then this is phase 2A. So that's where, remember when we were on this map here, the red is going to be the Palmetto Collection. So these are going to be the fancier, nicer, more expensive homes, whereas these yellow 
lots. They're going to be a little smaller lots, and they're going to be the Cypress collection. They're going to have the vinyl siding and, you know, more plain Jane looking homes. So back here, you know, on phase one, let's let this load here. So these are the model homes. The red and the green are what they released. I was told every lot sold in the initial phase. They just must not have closed them out on the website. They essentially should all be red. Um, but, you know, this is that really big lot here. When we click on it, we can kind of show you that, you know, this has that golf cart garage there. These are going to be a little bit bigger houses. And then we get into these with the different elevations where we see those double porches. So, and then in phase 2A, you know, this is a little, a little less over here. It's just kind of a little more boring. So, you know, we pull up one of these lots and these, you know, the houses are just, you know, it's more of a, you need a roof over your head. You don't really care what it looks like and you want to save a little bit of money. The last thing I do want to mention are the amenities. Now, I was originally told that they would open them as soon as possible. Now we're being told they're going to break ground in 2023 with a six to eight month build time, which means you probably won't be getting into that pool until 2024. So getting into that neighborhood now is actually putting you two to three years away from actually swimming in the pool. So I reached out and said, well, what are the HOA dues now compared to what they're projected to be when that pool opens? Well, right now, they're going to be about $1,425 per year. And then once that pool opens, they're gonna go up to about 1,600 a year. So it's not that big of a difference. It's almost $1,500 a year to live in a construction zone without a pool. And because all of these lots are on septic, be very careful when you choose your lot that if you do want a pool, that it can fit that pool and you're allowed to put a pool on that lot. So if you are interested in the lots, you know, reach out to me, I can find the plats for you, I can shoot them over, we can send them to a pool installer and you know, hopefully they can look at it and say, yes, this would or would not be feasible to have that pool there. So what do you guys think? Am I spot on about this? Have you put in an easy offer with Pulte and how did it go? Did you get it? Did you not get it? Was it a pain in the butt to deal with? Um, we would love to know. My viewers would like to know, my clients would like to know, other people's clients would love to know. I think we need that information for everybody. Now, I do wanna let you know, I am not trying to persuade anyone to not buy in this neighborhood. It's going to be an amazing neighborhood once it's all built out. I just think right now, going in there, you need to know the facts and you deserve to be informed, especially when you're considering that the prices are gonna be between four hundred dollars and $700,000 on a new home. Going in not knowing what that process is going to look like, I think is a huge risk. I hope you guys found value in this. Check out some of my other videos and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye.